Hello everybody, welcome back to Bootstrap Workbench. Today I wanted to talk about programming a Motorola XPR radio using Moto Turbo a CPS. Now you can get that uh, from Motorola for free. Uh, you just have to sign up for a Motorola online account and uh, there are some steps to go through. It can take a little bit of time, but they're not going to uh, charge you for the uh, Moto Turbo CPS. I've got it here installed on uh, one of my computers in the uh, ham shack. So I'm going to go ahead and start it up. Hello, Moto. Hello, Moto. All right. So once you're in here, what you're going to want to do, of course, you'll need to have an interface cable to connect your radio to your computer. It's a pretty simple interface. You're basically uh, connecting four pins in the option connector to a USB cable. And uh, you can buy those cables online, or you can even make them. Um, I've got one here somewhere that I made a while back. Uh, when I misplaced my uh, cable that I had bought. Uh, I'll put a picture of it in here. So, uh, you'll want to read your radio. That way you're making sure that you're getting all the information out of the radio. And... Um, like your uh, model number, your TENAPA number, your serial number, all of that stuff, firmware ID, frequency range, everything, and everything that's already pl uh, programmed into it. So the uh, what you'll need to do if you want to create a new code plug for your radio is you'll download it. Then you'll want to go to general settings and fill in for radio name, you'll put your call sign for radio ID. You'll put your uh, DMR ID if you have one, um, which... If you don't have one, you're, you're not going to be able to use the DMR features of the radio. So once you've got that set, um, you'll need to go through and set a few other options here and there. So let's take a look. I currently have it set. Let's see here. Oh, under digital emergency, I have revert security set to disabled. That will... Uh, prevent some issues that you might run into. So then you'll need to go in and set up your contacts. Under digital, you'll set uh, the talk groups that you want. And this is basically, you'll go to the talk group list and you'll set um, your digital contact to whatever that number is. So like for instance, Brandmeister 91, call ID is 91. Brandmeister 98, call is 98. Simple enough. Then you'll want to set up your receive group lists. That way um, you can set um, what a digital channel is in, what a receive group list it's in, so that you hear the correct group when you're scanning. So that's what I have set here. Then you'll start to add your channels. Now, you're limited to 16 channels per group. So I have a ham digital group that mostly includes uh, my hotspot here at the house. And then I have some analog groups. So this radio will do digital and analog as well. So I've got my local analog repeaters. I've got it set up to where I can listen in on GMRS. I've got it set um, with some analog repeaters from a town that's about 50, 60 miles from here and uh, just various things in here, and then some local county stuff that's on uh, UHF. So then after that, you'll make your scan lists, and what you'll do is you'll just go through the list of available channels and you'll add them to the scan list. That way when you're in the zone, you can select what zone you're in, and it has an associated scan list, and you only hear the channels that are in that scan list. So that's a uh, pretty quick basic way on how you set that up. Once you're done making your changes, of course, I recommend that you save. And then I also recommend, of course, if you want your changes to go to the radio, you need to write them. So the you'll hear the sound from Windows. The radio, if I had it turned up, would also make a sound to let you know programming's complete. I've got it turned down because I've currently got it on Brandmeister 93. Uh, which is one of the uh, global groups. And so it uh, it's pretty busy. In fact, I could probably turn it up here. 
they were talking just before I started. Oh, the radio has changed zones on me. So let me change zones. You still monitoring 93 or did you uh, lose contact with the repeater? So there we go. We're actually hearing traffic on Brandmeister 93 through my Raspberry Pi hotspot that I've got uh, set up here in the shack. Um, I don't have a digital repeater anywhere close enough to where I could hit it. So I'm hotspotting for everything. I actually have two hotspots here. Uh, one is for DMR on this radio. I also have an ICOM 7100 that'll do D-Star. And I have a separate hotspot that will do uh, the D-Spot or the D-Star hotspot. And in fact, I'll cover that one in a future video, how I set that up. It, it took some effort to get things set correctly. So I will uh, I'll be covering that soon. Anyways, if you have any questions, comments, uh, put them down below. And uh, I hope you all have a great day. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.